Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video on one of the specific functions of an HTX powered radio. It's aimed at those of you that are relatively new to HTX, might be coming to HTX from FreeSky, Fataba, Spectrum, or maybe you're brand new to the hobby. Now there are links below to the rest of the videos in the series, as well as more advanced stuff as well. Don't forget you can find content by just looking for the thing you're interested in and adding Painless360 to your search term here on YouTube. So let's jump on the bench and let's talk about the topic for today. So this time it's all about trims, specifically these little switches that sit beside the four main flight controls. These four main flight controls that sit here, the midpoints are set by or adjusted by these little trim tabs. And if you look at the screen, for example, the, the way it works is that the horizontal trim is done for this control. The vertical trim is done for this control. Typically, you won't use the trim over here for the throttle. However, some people do for things like glow and IC engines to cut off the fuel, but this one is for the rudder. So if you watch channel one, which is this one here, as I move the trim, trim reached. you'll see that now it always goes back to that middle position. The entire channel has been shifted in that direction, and I can come back and reset it. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, if you're a multi-rotor pilot or you're regularly flying with flight controllers, you never ever touch the trims, or well, you shouldn't anyway, once it's set up and your radio has been calibrated and the middle channel positions are outputting exactly 1500. However, if you are playing with things like servos or you're not messing around with things like flight controllers, then trims are a really fun thing to do. So if you're a flight controller person or something like a beta flight quad pilot, you can skip this entire video if you want to learn how the trims work in HTX because you do play with things like servos and stuff, then stay with me. So the cool thing is if we go into the model menu and we just go into the inputs, let's choose aileron. We were looking at that just before. That's the first channel. One of the things you can see down here is there's an extra little button with a little cog on it. If we press on that, it lets us pick which trim we want. It can be on or we can actually choose a different trim. So this allows us to do something called cross trimming because obviously if I am flying and the plane or wing has a horrible lurch to one side so I'm having to hold the stick in one position to then move the trim to take care of that I have to take my finger off it. Now that's not great. So what some pilots do is to switch the trims around so that the trim for the aileron is actually over here. And, they, and that means that as I'm flying, I can actually trim the control. And this is where you can actually set which one you want to use and you can swap them around. Or you can actually turn it off so the trim doesn't work at all. That can be very handy, particularly if you're playing things with multi-rotors and you're accidentally bumping these things. Some of the radios designed more for just multi-rotor use tends to just drop these trims off completely. So let's turn that back on so that we can continue to play. And that by default will just put the aileron back with its appropriate trim. You will notice there are extra trims on this radio. Those are available if you want to set it up for different things, maybe you have another servo output, maybe it's a pan and tilt setup or something like that, and you want to use those trims to set the center exactly perfectly, you would use those for that. Now, as well as normal trims, or the trims that we have here, we also have something called sub trims, and they are on the outputs. If we look at channel one and we edit it, you'll see that we have the name and all the other bits and pieces, and over here, we have something called sub trim. What's the difference between trims and sub trims? Well, sub trims are things that typically you don't set via controls. Those are set when you set the plane up or the servo or whatever. And then these trims are used to dynamically adjust those and set them as you fly. So I tend to use sub trims when I'm setting up a plane to maybe make sure that the control surfaces are exactly in line with the rear of the wing or the vertical horizontal feathers at the back, whatever I'm setting up. 
and that's what I'll use sub trim for. When I'm flying, I will use a little bit of aileron trim, maybe a couple of clicks of elevator trim, just to get rid of any bias so that at cruise throttle, it flies straight and level. And that usually means that actually there's a little bit of roll to one side to counteract the torque roll from the prop and maybe a couple of clicks of elevator, usually in the upward direction, just to keep the nose up and keep it flying. So the two things, so I would say use the sub trim when you're setting up, but use the trim for when you fly. However, one of the cool things you can do here is at the top, it says add trims to sub trims. So at the moment, you can see that all the middle channel positions are 1500. You see that here where it actually says it. If, for example, I'm flying around and I find that I need to have a little bit of that trim, a little bit of that trim, and maybe touch a rudder for it to fly straight and level. We can see now that on the right hand side, rather than being zeros, it now has a small value. If I click add trims to sub trims, that has changed it. So now if I go and have a look at the inputs, at the aileron, and we edit the stuff, and we come all the way out of this, you can see that the trims are now back in the middle position because on the screen, as I move the trim around, you'll actually see it moving here on the screen. But now that middle, that trim has now been reset to the middle. So what I tend to do is the first time I fly, I will trim the model so it flies neutrally or the servos are where I want them to be. And then go into the model menu, go into the outputs and then click add all trims to sub trims and that will just save them. And then I know when I turn the radio on next time, so long as the trims are in their middle positions, the model is gonna fly absolutely great. Now appreciate that that is sometimes gonna be a little bit tricky. There is one extra little cool thing that you can do. Let's go back in the model menu, go into something called special functions. Special functions allows us to set up an instant trim. So I would set it typically for the sprung switch and click OK. And the function I'm going to select here is going to be called instant trim. If I enable it, what that means is every time I pull that switch, it's going to save the channel positions as they are on the radio for elevator, aileron and rudder into the trims automatically. Where you would use this is say you're going to maiden a new wing or plane, you throw it in the air and it really needs quite a lot of trim. So maybe for it to fly, you need to kind of hold the stick in kind of that position for it to fly. Well, as soon as you let go of that to try and go anywhere near the trims, it's going to be a disaster. Obviously you can use cross trims, so that would help. But if both sticks need to be in a particular position, maybe the rudder is a little bit out as well. Maybe, you know, that foam wasn't as well loved as it should have been when it was taken out of the mold before it was shipped to you. Then what you can do is you can just, as you're holding it straight and level, just hit that switch that we've just set up for instant trim and it will instantly save all of those trims. And then hopefully it's then just a little bit of a fine tuning with the trims to get it all working. So those are the tips really. There are the trims, we have extra ones. I would turn them off for a multi-rotor and just not bother about trims at all. However, you have the sub trims, which I would use for setup. And then once you have it all trimmed, save your trim to the sub trims so that you have these trims available. And if they're in the middle position, you know you're all tickety-boo. And finally, when you are maidening, I would recommend set up something like instant trim. It just makes it so easy to get very close to the trimmed setup of that particular plane or wing. And it's just a case of just nudging and dialing in the last couple of clicks because you'll be pretty close because it will have automatically saved where the sticks need to be for it to fly straight and level. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.